everyone it's Mari. I have another project today for honeybee stamps. I'm going to be using this paper hugs stamp set. I absolutely love this. This is especially a great stamp set for this time that we're in and I really love the image of the heart with the hug. I'm also going to be using the companion honey cuts and uh, I'm going to create a shaker element with the hearts that are part of that honey cut set. I'm going to use the postage stamp squares dies for the front panel of my card today. I'm going to be using that size that I'm showing you there, which is a four by four square. And I also wanted to use the wish sentiment from the wish honey cut set. And that is going to create the sentiment for the front of my card. So let's get to the card process today. I'm working on my waffle flower media mat and I'm just taking some distress ink squares in rainbow colors. I'm just using them in that uh, square in those little square um, areas there on the right of the mat. I know I'm slightly off screen there. Sorry about that. But the really cool thing about the waffle mat mat is it's got those squares that are perfect dimension for these um, ink cubes and I'm just putting down that ink and getting it all ready to do some water coloring here today. So just a rainbow of colors ranging from pink all the way down to purple and I'm just using a watercolor brush here that's flat. Um, now this particular one is a Vicky Booten one and I just like the size of it for the watercolor rainbow stripes that I'm going to be using on my Ranger watercolor paper. So my idea was to create these um, rainbow colored stripes. One thing I wanted to keep in the video here is this mistake that I just made. I did not let the colors dry when I first started before I put one the second color next to the first. And if you want them to blend together, that's fine. You can leave, you can go with a wet on wet technique, but I didn't want that. I wanted the colors to stay separate. So it is really important to dry the first color before you add the second color to it. Otherwise, the second color will bleed into the first. So I fixed that just by um, sopping up that little color area that was bleeding into the other and just with a little bit of paper towel and then I dried the two colors and then I went over the pink again just to make sure that it would stay solid. So I'm just going with um, you know pink to yellow to kind of an orangey color there to uh, yellow and once again, like I said, I'm just using a rainbow of colors from those distress inks. So I did show you the lids to the distress inks there when I was um, putting them out. So hopefully you can pause the video so you can see what colors those different colors are. And I mean, just use whatever you have. If you don't have the distress inks, you can just use watercolors. You could use, um, you know, gelatos. You could use any kind of medium that you have that can be watered down and create watercolor out of it. And uh, the nice thing that what I liked about the size of this particular brush is that it allowed me to use all of the colors that I had picked out based on the width of the um, bristles of the brush and the size of the panel of paper that I'm using. So um, you can just see here, I'm going in with a range of different green colors and into the blues and then into the purple that is going to finish off that rainbow stripe um, effect that I'm going for here. So this is just a really easy way to create a little background for a project for your card. Um, super, super simple. It did not take me long to do this and you could use any type of watercolor paper that you have. What I really like about the Ranger watercolor paper is it is just a really nice bright white color and um, it's already cut to size. Um, I find that there's very little waste with their paper when I'm card making. I just like using it for my card making projects. And I am going to cut this down a little bit um, with that postage stamp die set um, or with a four by four die. But um, I am going to um, set aside some of the extra uh, uh, cutouts that I create with this paper to use on other products and or projects. And you'll see what I mean when I get to cutting out the center part of this panel. So here you can see that I've got that postage stamp die there ready to cut out the shape for my card front. And you'll just see here, I'm just taking my purple tape and rubbing it on my skin first, just to make sure that I take some of the stamp 
sticky off. Otherwise it will actually stick to this watercolor paper and tear it and you don't want that. Now I'm taking one of the heart dies. There's two heart dies in that paper hugs honey cuts. They are two different sizes, obviously. I'm taking the larger one and I am going to, I have cut that out of my watercolor paper and I've also created a card base. Now my card base is out of some 110 pound Nina solar white cardstock. It is cut to four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And I am going to just put that into my Misty now, place the watercolor paper onto the card base and place that paper hugs heart stamp in the area where I've die cut out the heart shape. And in that way, I can make sure that I have got my um, stamp in the right place for behind my shaker element. So the heart is going to be uh, in a shaker element, obviously. And I wanted that paper hugs image to, behind, to be behind my sequin mix in my shaker. So now what I want to do is stamp out the image for behind my shaker image or behind my shaker element. And I'm just going to take some VersaFine Onyx Black ink and stamp out that inked up image onto the area there where I know that my rainbow um, pattern paper, or I should say watercolor paper, is going to fit over top perfectly. So now that I've got that all stamped out, I'm going to take my tape runner. I'm going to put a little bit of adhesive on the back of it and I've cut a piece of acetate to fit over top of that area. So this is just a piece of clear acetate sheet. Um, I've just cut it down with my paper trimmer and now uh, that element is all ready to go for the next step. Now I'm taking some foam strips. These are uh, foam strips that are already cut into strips. You take the release paper off the back and that makes them super bendy. You can just bend them in whatever shape you want basically. And so I've got the release paper off the back of the foam strips and I'm just going to adhere those down leaving a border around my heart because the I don't want this to to show on my um card front when I stick my rainbow paper down to this. I don't want the adhesive to show. So I'm just putting it over a little bit beyond that black line. Now I'm just taking my shaker mix and I'm putting this in here. This is just a really pretty iridescent mix of glitter and sequins. You can use whatever you have in your stash, but this is just a really pretty shaker mix that you can kind of see through. And I didn't want too much in here. So you can see I got way too much in there. So I'm just gonna take my little Nouveau spoon I'm going to spoon some of that out onto my mat. I'll just put it over to the side of my mat so that I can scoop it up back into the container later. And uh, in that way, I just, you know, you can make sure that you can still, I, I wanted to make sure you could still see that gorgeous stamped image behind all of my little sprinkles here. So once I'm happy with how much I've got in there, I'm going to take that rainbow paper with the um, acetate on, on it, and I'm going to place that over top. Now, the reason why I did this this way is because I wanted to make sure that I had that cutout centered really well over top and nice and, you know, so that um, everything's centered properly on the front of that card. So that's why I put the, the foam adhesive strips on the card base rather than on the back of the acetate rainbow paper. Now I'm just taking some other little pieces of foam adhesive uh, to pop up and sort of like support the rest of that card front. I'm going to put some little pieces of foam adhesive in each of the corners of that stamp honey cut and there is the finished shaker element and I love how that looks. Now you can actually layer these two hearts one on top of each other. So if you cut the largest one, that's what I did here with this glitter paper. I cut the largest one and then I nested the smaller one over top of that and it creates just a nice, beautiful, fine little heart frame. And I'm going to glue that little heart frame on the inside of my shaker element um, on top of the acetate so that it provides a little really sparkly, pretty purple, um, fine frame inside the shaker element on the front of the card, on the top of the acetate. Now I'm just taking my Nouveau adhesive and I have cut out the Wish sentiment from the Wish Honey Cuts. I've cut it three times, twice from some of the Nina 110 pound heavy cardstock. And I'm gonna glue those together with my Nouveau adhesive. And then I'm going to adhere on top of that 
that really beautiful glitter paper that I used for my little heart frame. The purple glitter paper I'm going to use on top of this wish sentiment and that's just going to fish finish the sentiment off love in a lovely way and I have taken the sentiment hang in there from the paper hug stamp set and I've stamped that on the inside of my card and I just wanted this to be an inspirational card for someone that might be struggling at this time you know it's a tough time uh, people are going through a lot of different things and I just thought this was just a really happy fun card now I have linked up all of the products that I have used in the uh, in the video down below so if you check the show more section you'll be able to see all the different products that I've used today. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope to see you again here on the channel. Have an amazing day, stay safe, and I'll see you again. Bye-bye.